In this swamp in North Canterbury, an expedition from the Canterbury Museum is excavating for moa bones. Moas were large flightless birds that roamed New Zealand in prehistoric times. The largest species looked something like an ostrich, was nearly as tall as a giraffe, and probably ate more grass in a day than a bullock. A study of the position of the leg bones shows that the birds waded into the swamp, became bogged there and drowned or starved. The ground, even in summer, is spongy and in winter the excavations have to be abandoned. In two recent summers, though only about a quarter of the swamp has been worked, a record number of complete skeletons has been found. The area is being systematically dug and the positions of the skeletons plotted. Already this method shows that of the four species of moa, the smaller ones were trapped near the edge of the swamp while the larger species ventured into the deeper mud and met the same fate. The soil is carefully scratched away so that the layout is not disturbed, and before the bones are moved, sketches are made and measurements taken. This bone is the femur, or thigh bone. And here is the crown of the head. This is the tibia, the main leg bone, and here are the metatarsal and foot bones complete with joint. The smaller remains, including vertebrae and ribs, are sorted from the soil. The moa, like other ground birds, carried stones in its crop to aid digestion, and from them geologists will be able to tell when these birds lived. It's already established that only the one species was alive when the Maoris first visited New Zealand a thousand years ago. An ornithologist demonstrates the operation of the jaw while the leg is being assembled. These leg bones belong to the largest species, the Dinornis, and are heavier than a draft horse's. This is the pelvis. This magnificent collection of skeletons will be used to build up museum exhibits in New Zealand and other countries. It's the largest deposit of moa remains found for 50 years. And though the study of the moa is 100 years old, much fresh information has been gathered already about the habits of these birds and New Zealand's earliest history. The annual contest for the world's 18-foot yachting championship has resolved itself into a tussle between Australia and New Zealand, who have developed centreboard 18s unique in the world. The Australian boats are professionally built racing skiffs, completely open except for a lee cloth used when sailing on the wind. In contrast, the New Zealand boats are half-decked and can be used for limited cruising. The majority are amateur built and sailed by their young owner builders. They're restricted to 400 square feet in the mainsail and jib, and all are Maconi rigged. The Australians have no restrictions on sail area, and with their long spars and enormous bowsprits, they carry twice the sail of the New Zealand boats. This year's contest is between teams of four boats from each country and is being sailed on Auckland's famous Waitamata Harbour as four Auckland boats are defending the title for New Zealand. Australia's number one, Crow's Nest, is ready for the first of the three races. Thousands of spectators, both ashore and afloat, turn out to see this event every year, and hundreds of cars line Auckland's waterfront. Yachting enthusiasts will go to any extreme to see a good race. And for those who want to be really close, an Auckland Harbour ferry provides a floating grandstand. The first race starts in a light northerly breeze. Ideal conditions for the Australian boats with their big sails, but Auckland's Beverly, sailed by her young owner builder, is outpacing the fleet. She forges steadily ahead and is first round the top mark by a narrow margin from Crow's Nest and Top Dog of Australia. Spinnakers are quickly broken out for the long run before the wind on the second leg of the nine mile triangular course. The Australian crews give a smart exhibition in handling their boats with their phenomenal spread of canvas, which has made them world famous for spectacular racing.
Beverly is still holding her lead with her Madadran spinnaker drawing well, but in the light breeze, she's no match for the Australians. With ringtails and spinnakers set, they're carrying over 2,000 square feet off the wind. They blanket Beverly completely and run into the lead. Crow's Nest is well in front now and she jides round the last mark minutes ahead of the next boat. Well sailed by veteran Bill O'Hayward of Sydney, she goes on to win the first race for this year's World Championship. The second race was sailed in an even lighter wind and it was another walkover for the Australian boats which filled the first four places. Crow's Nest was first again and with two wins to her credit, she has a commanding lead on points. For the third and last race, the weather is sunny with a fresh southwest breeze, a typical summer day on Auckland Harbour, and the conditions that make it a yachtsman's paradise. <laughs> Top dog of Australia is in the lead at the first mark, and she rounds it ahead of the fleet. But the Auckland boats are at home in the conditions that bred them. They're sailing better than in the light airs of the two previous races, and their trim rigs and light displacement hulls are more than holding their own with their over-canvassed rivals. Top Dog still leads at the next mark, but the Aucklanders Makushla, Beverly, Matara and Fleetwing are now close up. Auckland's chances are lessened when Beverly loses her forced day and retires when she's sailing well and looked a certain place getter. All eyes are now on the Auckland champion Matara in the background. She's completely out sailing the Australians on the wind, the Aussies are finding the going tough and their open boats are shipping a lot of water. Conditions are perfect for the more rugged Auckland boat and she sails brilliantly through to windward. Matata wins by over a minute from Australia's top dog and top weight in second and third places. It's Auckland's only win, but Matata has proved her superiority in a good breeze. It's a great victory for Jack Logan, who built, owns and sails her. She gets third place in the contest, but top points go to Sydney's old-timer Bill O'Hayward and the crew of the Crow's Nest who with two firsts win this year's world's 18-footer championship for Australia.